Hey guys, welcome back. Today on The Untidy Artist, I'll be showing you how to make a vintage style St. Patrick's Day fairy doll. This was a request I got from a subscriber, so thank you for this darling idea. Um, I actually had no idea that there were vintage style postcards that used to be sent out for St. Patrick's Day. And as I started researching and looking at all of these beautiful images, I got really excited to make this vintage style St. Patrick's Day doll. I loved the white layer um, underneath the green pinafore and I really wanted to capture the feeling and the style of these postcards in this fairy doll. So. Let's grab what we need and get started. Now the first thing you're going to need is some flowers. I actually found most of these flowers at the dollar store and I've kind of been collecting them over the years. I, it seems like every year around St. Patrick's Day they come out with these carnations that are a different version of white and green, sometimes with glitter, sometimes without. And I really have been just kind of buying these every year at St. Patrick's Day with the idea that I would do another St. Patrick's Day fairy because I did do one a few years ago. So I just gathered all of these up. I thought I'd use some of the different layers and then I wanted to use a white base or a white underneath layer for the doll skirt. So I have this really pretty white rose that'll give us that layer. And then I have these little shamrocks that I purchased and I believe that I got these at Michael's and I'll just be using one of these. And then I've got my thread. I have a dark green, a lighter green, which I didn't end up using and black for her shoes and white for the her base layer of her dress and her socks. And then I've got this wire ribbon. It's gold and kind of a cream color and it worked out really well just to add some embellishments to our doll. So I'll be using this. And then I have these little green flowers and then we'll also be using a little piece of white lace. I've got some sharp scissors and my glue gun set on low. And last but not least, I have my fairy doll. Now, if you're new to making fairies, you'll wanna check out my basic fairy doll tutorial where I teach you how to take a wooden bead, a piece of floral wire, and some embroidery floss and twist it into this beautiful little doll. And you'll find those step-by-step -step instructions in my basic doll, fairy doll tutorial. You can see I've already styled her hair. I've given her a curly hairstyle. You'll find that tutorial also on my YouTube channel and I will put both of those links below. You can obviously style your doll's hair however you'd like. I gave my doll auburn colored curly hair. All right, so once you've got your doll all put together, Go ahead, grab your white, and we're going to create our first layer of her clothes. So I'm actually going to wrap in a V, starting at her waist, wrapping up into a V, and then I'm going to give her some kind of puffed sleeves. So what I did to achieve that look is I wrapped down and back once, and then down and back again on each side of her sleeves, which gave us a thicker layer and giving us that look of a puff sleeve. You'll find more detailed instructions on how to dress your fairy doll in my basic fairy doll tutorial. Then I just took the white down and gave her a little pair of shorts. So you can see she's got the V-neck and then she has the sleeves that I've given four, I've wrapped four times in total on each side to give us the thicker look. Then I'm gonna grab the green and I'm going to start right around her waist and I'm going to wrap up right to underneath her arms. And once I reach that point, I'm going to stop and I'm going to wrap the green to give us a strap over the white, which will give us that look of a pinafore type top or that she has um, a layer over the white. So I'm wrapping the green around starting right underneath her arm up and over about three times and then I wrap it around the middle again and I do the exact same thing on the other side. So she has some little green uh, straps over her white layer underneath. And then I wrapped down to about her waist and ended there and trimmed off my thread so she's got her white shorts and then the green layer over the top of the white. And then I'm going to set her aside, grab my flowers and pull them apart. What I want to do is to start layering these together in different ways to get the look and feel that I want for her dress. So I did want her to have white underneath and I wanted it to look like a white base layer. 
So I kind of just started layering those together and then I grabbed some of my different carnation leaves that were the green and the white and just added a few layers of those to get the look that I wanted. I did want the top of her dress to be a darker green so that was the layer that I ended up with and then I held it up to my doll just to kind of get a feel for it and see if that's the way I wanted it to look. Once I had it the way I wanted it, I grabbed my flowers, lined up the little holes and I'm going to cut an X into the middle of the flowers so that we can slide the flower petals up and around our doll's waist. So do that to all of your petals and once you have them all cut in the center you're going to slide them up and around her waist starting with the top layers of her skirt and I really just fell in love with how fluffy this skirt ended up being and I loved the different colors of white and green and that little tiny bit of glitter on the ends of one of the layers of the carnations and once you have those all slid up around her waist you're going to take your glue gun and using little dabs of glue, working slowly, you're going to tack the skirt in place, arranging the skirt as you go so that the layers overlap in a way that's really pretty and fluffy and so that the petals aren't directly laying on top of each other. You want a nice full skirt. So tiny dabs of glue, arranging as I go. And you're going to do this in the front and in the back. And once you have her skirt all arranged the way that you'd like it, we're going to add some shoes and socks to our doll. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to give her a little pair of socks and then I'm going to take my black and wrapping over the white, I'm going to give her a little pair of black shoes. Now the reason I waited to do the shoes and socks until after I had her skirt on is because sometimes if the shoes and socks get really thick, it's harder to put her feet through the holes in the flower petals. Um, to put her skirt on. So I waited to do that until after I had her skirt on. Then I'm going to style my doll's hair. I wanted to get it out of the way because I'll be adding some detail around her waist and those gorgeous curls were hanging down by her waist. So I went ahead and styled my doll's hair. You can once again style your doll's hair however you'd like. I decided to just give her this really pretty curly hairstyle and once again you'll find that tutorial on my YouTube channel as well as other types of hairstyles that you might want to give your doll. Then I'm going to take my wired ribbon and I'm going to wrap a layer of it around her waist. So to do this I grabbed my glue gun, I added a small dab of glue right on the front of my doll at the base of her skirt, wrapped it around to the back and then added a couple more dabs of glue, tacking it in place to hold that ribbon down. Now I'm going to be giving my doll a big bow in the back of her dress, but instead of trying to tie a bow with the ribbon and arrange it in a way that looked decent, I'm going to do this in different steps. So the first step is to wrap it around her waist like we just did. And now I'm going to take a piece of ribbon that's about four inches long, three or four inches long. I'm gonna fold it at an angle and we're going to glue that right underneath the ribbon at the back of her dress. And this will give us the pieces of the bow that will be hanging down. But we're going to do a couple layers of ribbon hanging down over her skirt. And so this is um, how we're going to achieve that first layer of ribbon. So I just tack that in place right at the base of her skirt and then I'm going to grab my shamrock and I'm going to put a shamrock on the back of her skirt. I felt like this doll really needed to have a shamrock somewhere if she's going to be a true vintage style St. Patrick's Day fairy. So I grabbed one of these little uh, petals and I'm just going to take a tiny dab of glue and glue that right at the back of her dress. And I thought this just added a really pretty detail to the back of her skirt. So a tiny dab of glue, tack that in place, and then set her aside and we're actually going to create the bow. To create the bow, I took a piece of my wired ribbon and I'm going to loop it up and around starting on one end 
and tack that in place with a little dab of glue. So this is the first loop on our bow. And just secure that in place. And then I'm going to loop the other side up and around to create the second loop on our bow. And I'm not going to trim it just yet because we'll be wrapping that middle part around the center of our bow. So I'm going to add another dab of glue to tack that into place. And once it's set, I'm going to wrap that ribbon up and around a couple times and tack it with a dab of glue in the back. Once again, I find that it's easier to create a bow on the back of my doll's dress this way instead of trying to tie it around her waist and get a bow that looks like a bow. So I have my little loops and I'm going to now take those and tack it right on the back of her dress over the little shamrock that we glued down. And then we're going to add one more detail with our wired ribbon. So I took a piece that was about an inch and a half long and trimmed it at an angle. And I'm going to use a tiny dab of glue and just glue it right underneath the bow so it looks like we have two layers of ribbon hanging down from our bow. So tiny dab of glue and I'm just sliding that under one of the loops, holding it in place, and I love that the ribbon had wire in it because it allowed me to arrange it so it looked like it was flowing down really pretty from the back of her dress. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And so it gives this, us this really uh, dimensional bow on the back of her dress that I thought was interesting and a really nice um, element and detail to the back of her dress. And then I'm going to give the ends of the ribbon a trim And last but not least, we're going to give her hair some embellishments. So I'm going to grab my white lace that I have, and I'm actually just going to cut out a little piece of this white lace um, to use up in her hair. I wanted a little bit of the white peeking out underneath the little green crochet flower that we have. So I'm just trimming off a little piece of this lace And it ended up being almost a teardrop shape. So then I'm going to take my glue gun and using a tiny dab of glue, I'm going to add some glue to the very top of my teardrop shape and pinch it to kind of curve the lace. So just pinching it right at the top and that gave us a shape that I felt would work better in her hair. So then I'm going to take my little green crochet flower and I'm going to glue that right over the top of my little piece of lace. And you can see that by cutting the lace and putting that little tiny dab of glue at the top, it helped the lace curve nicely underneath the little green crochet flower. So after I've tacked those two together, I'm going to add a small dab of glue and being very careful, I'm going to add our hair accessory to our fairy doll's hair. And that's it guys, you're all set. You have a vintage style St. Patrick's Day fairy doll. Thanks again to this awesome suggestion. I had a lot of fun putting this doll together. I was really pleased with how she turned out and it was a lot of fun discovering all of the beautiful vintage style St. Patrick's Day postcards that were out there. If you decide to recreate this doll, please share a picture with me either on Instagram with the hashtag untidyartistfairydoll or you can private message me on Facebook if you have any comments or questions, please post those below. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed, please do. That would be awesome. Please check out some of my other tutorials on my YouTube channel. I have a lot of different fairy dolls as well as other craft ideas. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.